Absolutely, yes. Yeah. It's, um, it's just it's like the greatest story never told. And, you know, part of the reason why I became a, a writer was because of, you know, the stereotypes that you spoke about before and also because of exactly what you're talking about, those things that people in the Western world don't even know that are going on, like these human petting zoos. A lot of people have no idea about that. And I, I wanted right. to talk to you a little bit a little bit more about religion in a minute or so, but I had a couple more questions about the movies. Now, mm-hmm. when, when you were an actress, you were known for a a really catchy line. Now, could, could oh, you yeah. say it for <laughs> Right, me love you long time. Right. Right now, I'm surprised you knew that. that. Yeah, I I was very famous for saying that, and it became in a rap, a rap record. Um, and they had an Asian woman do it. Exactly. Yes, it was um, Two Live Crew, Meet Me So Horny, and I always thought that that line came from the movie Full Metal Jacket. Um, if they had her do it, and I had done it first, because Full Metal okay. Jacket. When did that come out? I'm not sure. I think it was the 80s. I can look it up. Now, did if you it come came out in the 80s, if it came out in the 80s, then I copied her without knowing it. Okay. You know, well, if, you know, they Because, see, my movie, my movie that I said that in was called The Curtain, which came out in 1990, 1995. So, um, The Curtain, or Al is what it was called in, in the Arab world, Al Sitar, which means The Curtain. Um, that was where I said that at, and um, I didn't know then because I didn't write it. I was told to say that, so apparently oh, okay. then they must have had me copy her, and I didn't know it. But I, throughout the Arab and African world, became really um, famous for saying that. Well, I just uh, looked up Full Metal Jacket. It was actually 1987. But have you ever used that phrase as a pickup line to get a man? Oh no. <laughs> no, that just would be um, too much. You know, I was not, um, I don't know, my kind of flirting isn't that isn't sexual. I flirt in a, like, comical way. And um, I just really used my look to flirt, you know, because I had really big breasts and a tiny waist and was really tall, you know, 55-inch legs. So I would just smile a lot. And, you know, I never really would say sexual innuendo type stuff. I didn't have to because the men were so busy, you know, making jokes like that. Right. Now, (laughs) speaking of loving people a long time, you, uh, not very long ago, a few years ago actually, had a relationship, I guess you could say, with the rapper, (laughs) Wale, and you guys oh, kind of yeah. got into a, a big Twitter thing. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, like we've had it, several it, Twitter uh, fights. We've had several Twitter wars. Um, and, um, well, the latest one, I was just making fun of saying he's no good and bad and this and that. And um, it's not really true. I just said that because he dissed me in one of his songs. You know, in one of his songs, he tried to call me ugly. And the reason he did that is because we had a previous pr- Twitter battle where I had attacked him for making a video called Pretty Girls, and there wasn't one single black woman in the whole video. And I'm like, how do you think that makes the millions of little African girls and black girls in America who follow your career, how do you think that makes them feel that you're saying they're not pretty, that nobody who's black is pretty? Um, No one in the video looks anything like his mother. And I'm saying, how do you think that damages the psyche of these little girls following you who are black? And, you know, you're claiming to be trying to, you know, help break, I don't know what you're trying to do as an artist, but you're just spreading white supremacy. And so when I challenged him on that on Twitter and we fought about it is what made him go. He actually also went and made a video for the first time that featured a black woman. And that was called Lotus Blossom Love or something. But it was Lotus Blossom in the title. And that was because of me. There's even an article in Vibe where he says it's because of me. And so um, that was a great accomplishment that he... um, you know, 
admitted that and did that, but he still dissed me in a song. And so that's why I um, talked about him. Of course, I never knew the press would pick up on it. I mean, you really don't when you're tweeting and you're upset with someone. And not really upset, but just, you know, going off, playing the dozens. And you don't realize that it could the next day be a news story, and that's what happened. So. Well, I, I, per- I personally found it to be thoroughly entertaining. Some of the stuff that you said about him <laughs> it needs to be in a script somewhere it was hilarious, especially the part about the raisin that I'm not going to... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I won't elaborate too much on it, but it was freaking hilarious. Now, And you know what's of, funny? And honestly, he's not that bad. I mean, I just was attacking him because he had been such an ass. But <laughs> it is funny. It really is hilarious. I'm enjoying people believing it and laughing and stuff. Absolutely. Now, I mean, I, I I hope that he got a laugh out of it, too, because honestly, it was hilarious. But speaking of musicians now, you're a singer yourself, and you have a very beautiful singing voice. I actually saw a YouTube video with you in the studio. Oh, yeah, I really can. And what's funny is I sound so different singing than I do talking. And people are always stunned. Um, when I go to events and I'll sing live a cappella, you know, just can't believe it. They're like, wow. But you know what? I'm not like a professional singer. I've never sang professionally. I only just sing to sing song from Africa so that they're recorded. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Right. So that like the song you saw me on YouTube singing, that song is an ancient song. I believe it's called, yeah, you saw the one called My Breast is Filled with Milk and Honey which is a mother song, and that song is like 20,000 years old. And that is why I'm doing it. It's just so that there's a recording of it somewhere so that that history is preserved. And it tells you in the description, you know, all about the song. And so maybe some black people, like, way after me and you are dead, they'll find that and say, well, we actually have a recording of an African woman singing it. You know what I'm saying? And so that's why I um, do the singing, but I'm not like a professional. I've never professionally sang. 